So if prosperity is going to come, we have to put our feet on the ground. We have to work hard. God is not going to bless. If God is going to bless the work of your hands, then you, there must be something that you're doing with your hands. So this prosperity gospel should be clarified. Yes, God desires to bless his children. But God does not bless people who are sitting and waiting for his blessing. God blesses people who wake up early in the morning, go chase the paper, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, basically that's how God blesses you. He bless, God blesses you through your gifts. What has God gifted you with? What are you good in doing? If you are a musician, look for studios, produce your music, go for shows, do this, do, do that, you know. God cannot just bless you while you're doing nothing. So I'm totally against, I'm totally against that prosperity gospel in the perspective of God will give you things while you're seated and doing nothing. God does not do that. Even when God wanted to create, he had to leave heaven and come down here and say, let there be. God himself works. Creation was, was done for six days. God worked tireless, I mean, tirelessly for six days. The Bible says and on the seventh day, he rested. The reason why he rested, well, there's the theological perspective of God does not get tired, you know. But there's also that aspect of I have worked, now it's time for me to rest. People work from Monday to Friday, others work from Monday to Saturday, and Sunday becomes a day of rest, you know. Yeah, so you cannot rest if you're not working. And God does not bless people who are resting from Monday to Monday. Get out of that blanket, go and work. God is going to bless you. God is going to prosper you as, as long as you're doing something. There are so many challenges I've faced since I got born again. I remember, I remember when God, I got born again, I was this naive young person. So in, I, we grew up in Machakos. So I used to carry, you see that thing? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I used to carry a big Bible. <laughs> I used to carry a big Bible and used to put on a t-shirt written, I belong to Jesus. So the guys we used to mess up with look, would look at me and they would laugh at me. They're like, hey, we a pastor, you know. They used to mock me, you know. Uh, there are people who have, of course, ridiculed me for the direction I decided to take, uh, you know, being born again. Uh, yes, the people, some people think if you're born again, it's new shamba, you know, you're, you're missing out on a lot. There are people who, old friends would even invite you for a drink, you know. Um, yeah, so, so not everybody takes it positively if somebody is born again. Some people think it's foolishness. There are people who have that school of thought, you know. Yeah, mission work. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, concerning missions, we've done so many missions. The challenges is that sometimes when you go for missions, we have to sleep in... Uh, we, we don't have places to sleep. So sometimes it'll be the kwakiti for the whole night. Sometimes actually you have to go without food. You know, uh, sometimes you have to sleep in, in the church premises. Yani kwa church ndani manaikiwa to mattress manalala. Those are the kind of challenges um, <coughs> we faced, you know, doing mission work. Uh, but the joy, the joy of having souls, you know, uh, the joy of having souls uh, coming to Jesus Christ makes the challenges inferior. There is a joy when you see somebody receive Jesus Christ. I remember actually there was a guy who was totally messed up. But when they saw the transformation with my life, they, I actually, I, they, they, uh, this is somebody who was telling me. They told them, me I'm saved because Elisha is saved. I just love the way God has changed this guy. This guy was messed up, you know. He ndo alikuwa gang leader. Kwa hizo vitu zote tulikuwa tunafanya was the bad guy, you know. Mimi ndo nilikuwa nawafunza kuiva, kufanya hizo vitu zote. And now God has changed me. So there are people who actually got saved not because I preached to them, but because they saw the transformation that I went through. So um uh, f uh well, so I'm free from weed. I used to smoke weed. Uh, but uh, when I got saved, that was around 2000 and, uh, 2010. Um, somehow, God just set me free from I think I came to the level of addiction. I came to the place where I need to go to a rehab. I have friends who have gone to rehab because of weed addiction and all these things. But for me, I think it had not gotten to that place. Because even, even when I was taking it, it's not like I was taking it like 
religiously like three times a day and all that. I used to just laugh what I used to feel after. But, but God delivered me. When I got saved, I said, no more weed. But there are things that were already deep-rooted, like porn and masturbation. This was something that was deep-rooted. So I struggled even when I got saved. I think, to be honest, I think the freedom came around 2015, 2016. So I got saved. I was still going to church. I know I don't want to lie to people. I was still serving, but I was still struggling with pornography and masturbation.